Hello student. So let us start our discussion. In uh, previous video, we have discussed the uh, I/O and uh, bus interface module means uh, we have discussed the need of interface. Then how many types of commands are there? Then uh, how interface will uh, play a key role in performing input-output operation? Now our uh, topic into this tutorial is memory mapped I/O versus isolated I/O. So here uh, we will try to consi uh, consider that how CPU is going to uh, manage the uh, input output operation and uh, memory operation uh, uh, means how CPU will store the data which is received from the memory as well as uh, which is received from input output device. Okay, so we are having two options. The first one is uh, isolated I/O and second one is memory mapped I/O. Okay, so in isolated I/O, uh, we will have separate address space. For memory and input output device. Okay, so uh, what we can say? that in case of uh, isolated I.O. we will have a separate address space for memory and separate address space for I.O. devices. So uh, both will have its own uh, we can say memory. Now uh, yes as we know when CPU wants to perform any input output operation okay it will uh, uh, provide the data or the information into the interface register. So here what will happen uh, in this case memory uh, in, in case of isolated IO uh, as we are having separate address for address space for memory and separate address for uh, address space for IO devices we will have separate instruction for IO and memory okay so we will have separate instruction for input output device and separate instruction for memory means uh, we will have separate instruction for io address space and separate instruction uh, set for uh, memory yes uh, isolated memory and io addresses so uh, Memory address values are not affected by interface address assignment since each has its own address space. Okay, so here uh, what will be the advantage? Let's uh, um, so while we are trying to access the memory. Okay, uh, it will not affect the or memory operation. Okay, memory operation. Uh, won't affect the input output operation yes memory operation won't affect input output operation why because we are having separate address space separate instructions and uh, separate control lines so uh, that will be the advantage now what is memory mapped io in memory mapped io uh, address space will be shared between memory and IO okay so previously here it was separate but in memory mapped IO we will have same address space and it will be shared between memory device and it, it will be it will be shared between memory and IO devices now uh, uh, as we are having uh, common uh, you can say uh, address space okay so we will have common instructions so there will be no separate 
instruction for io and memory so there will be no separate instruction for io and memory okay so let's say the instruction which we are using for memory that same instruction we can use for uh, you can say interface register or the address which is used for io devices okay here uh, in this case let's say a parallel operation execution may not be possible okay let's say if you are having single port memory then it is used by some uh, memory operation then we cannot perform the io operation why because the address space is same here what will be the another downside okay uh, another downside will be that uh, here less address space will be okay here less address space will be available for memory why because it is divided into two parts so uh, less address space will be used uh, in case of memory uh, as we have discussed previously there will be no uh, there won't be any specific input or output instructions so that can be uh, implemented using the memory reference instruction only and uh, uh, store a uh, load and store instruction which are used for reading and writing uh, content to and from the memory that same instruction can be used to uh, input and output data from the io register okay so this is the uh, difference of uh, memory mapped io and isolated io okay so uh, uh, this is how computer will uh, select any of this approach to implement the io devices uh, in most of the computers uh, there will be one common bus to transfer information between uh, memory or io and the cpu okay so in most of the architecture uh, we will go with the memory mapped io why because it will give us the flexibility to use the same instruction set for performing input output operation now if we look at the io interface okay then uh, let us first discuss the various component and then we will uh, try to understand what is the meaning of it so this is the bus buffer then this is port a register port b register control register status register here meaning of port is 8 bit so you don't get confused okay so it is uh, let's say 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bit but okay in most of microcontroller if you uh, define a port then uh, port is simply a group of 8 bits so rather than representing individual bit we will write it as port okay so uh, this port is uh, 8 input output line okay then there is a port b register then control register and then status register now if we look uh, then bus buffer and this is timing and control now if we look at the arrow okay so just try to look the arrow this arrow is bidirectional this arrow is bidirectional this arrow is bidirectional this, this arrow then all these arrows are bidirectional okay and these four arrows are unidirectional okay so what is meaning of this so first of all let me tell you this these port registers are used to transfer the data between cpu and devices okay so uh, whatever data cpu wants to send it will put that data into the bus buffer and then from bus buffer it will be forwarded to io devices via port register okay so uh, what is the meaning of this bidirectional arrow so this same port register will work as a input register as well as output register okay so there won't be any separate register for sending data uh, means for output and receiving data means for input okay so that same port register or same register will work as a input register and output register so this uh, both are bi-directional okay so it will take uh, it will take data it will receive data as well as it will send data 
Next is the uh, control register. So whatever control information CPU wants to send to the device, okay, it will uh, put that into the register inter uh, sorry interface register, and from there it will be placed into control register, and then it will be forwarded, okay. And uh, next is status register. So if uh, CPU is uh, seeking some status uh, from the I/O devices, okay, at that time these status registers will be used. So status a device will send the status in form of bit, and it will be stored into status register, and then from status register it will be forwarded to bus buffer, and from bus buffer via data bus it will enter into the memory, or it will be directly forwarded to the CPU. so uh, this is how it works okay and if you look at the timing and control then uh, here we are having five input okay uh, first one is uh, chip select next two is register select 0 and 1 then is read and then write okay so let us try to prepare uh, operation table uh, for this okay so if here here we are we are having uh, three parameter uh, chip select rs1 rs0 okay so uh, this entire interface will work if and if the value of chip select is 1 okay clear so if value of chip select is not 1 then this entire face interface will not work okay so working of this uh, interface is dependent on the value of chip select so we have to implement a certain circuit uh, before this uh, chip select uh, which will uh, uh, select a particular device or whenever a computer will send any uh, information with the address okay that device will decode that address and it will forward that at uh, means accordingly it will select the interface and then forward that detail to particular device okay so this chip select will play a key role okay value of chip select is 1 then and then this circuit will work okay so if value of chip select is 1 let's say here we will write chip select so we are having total 3 uh, decision parameter okay so first one is chip select then rs1 rs0 okay so in that case when our value of chip select is 0 then what our value of rs1 and rs2 okay rs here it is sorry rs0 whatever value of rs1 and rs0 is there okay nothing will be performed okay so uh, this interface will be disconnected from the computer in previous unit we have also discussed high impedance so this bus will be in high impedance state now let's assume that value of chip select is 1 okay so value of chip select is 1 and then we are having total total four possible combination 1 0 1 One, one zero, one, one one. Okay, so whenever value of these two bits are zero, okay, at that time port A means register of port A will be selected. Okay, so here we will write port A. Whenever it is zero one, at that time port B will be selected. a uh, 10 then control register and 11 uh, one, one, it is it will be used for status register now let's say a uh, cpu wants to uh, send something to the control information to the io device okay so what cpu will do via this chip select it will enable this chip then in register rs1 and rs0 and rs1 it will provide the value 10 so this control register will be selected and then data then write input will be enable i o write okay so what will happen that uh, this data will be uh, uh, for, sorry uh, it will select this control register that control information will be stored into the uh, control register okay and then it will uh, issue the you can say uh, i o write command so that for this control information will be forwarded to i o devices similarly whenever cpu wants to uh, read certain status at, at that time it will uh, select the uh, let's say 11 means a value of rs0 and rs1 will be 11 so it will select the status register and then it will issue the read command and then status will be forwarded to 
bus buffer and from bus buffer it will be forwarded to cpu okay so this is how an interface will work okay so uh, whenever cpu wants to perform an input output operation then cpu will use this interface okay so in this tutorial we will keep up to this in next tutorial we will start our discussion with asynchronous data transfer uh, in that we will discuss uh, two method for asynchronous data transfer probe and and checking thank you